all YouTubers. Yes, my wife's walking away. She doesn't like being videoed. Uh, this is gonna be, I guess, the part two of our uh, Tamako Hair uh, Tamako Summerfest uh, special tour we're gonna take of Lehigh Anthracite coal mine uh, between Tamako here and Lanchford, up in that up here between Tamako and Lanchford. Uh, so we're gonna hop on a nice air-conditioned bus. I get to cool off, and we're gonna see what we can see up here. So I'll probably not do any of the talking. I'll let the tour guide do the rest of the talking from here on out. So uh, come with us. Hey, what's up? So come with us and enjoy. Before, um, before we get too far, make sure you're on the right bus. This is the bus to Atlantic City, right? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do we get our free queens? <laughs> you gotta see Mike, the bus guy. <laughs> hey, that's not the casino. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak. If anybody can't hear me, just raise your hand. Our our PA was in and out, and it's not working. So I I think I could be loud enough to speak. Uh, I have no problem. What's that? I have no problem. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, appreciate your interest in Lehigh Anthracite for the mine tour, but most importantly. You're uh, supporting the Tobacco Historical Society. It's it's amazing uh, when someone gets an idea, you put your heads together or what we can do and come up with. So uh, the Historical Society reached out at the beginning of the year about resurrecting the mine tours. Um, had a few meetings, put our heads together. We think we have a good program today. What we came up with, our guys worked extremely hard all your proceeds goes to the Historical Society. Uh, nice. Lehigh Anthracite uh, contributed the bus. Nice. Some of our guys that are out here help uh, participate with taking care of that, but all the proceeds are going to the Historical Society. So, And when I visited there back at the beginning of the year, if you were there today or you weren't there, I encourage you to go there. It was awesome. I was... So, Especially being from the area, you can be really proud of it. So uh, I encourage you guys, girls, to uh, visit that. It was really awesome. My name's John Hattesty. Uh, I'm COO of Lehigh Anthracite. I've been here 35 years. Never had another job in my life. I never collected unemployment. And uh, so some, some people say, I come with the property, but uh, I just I love what I do. With me today is Greg Altenbach. He's uh, assistant safety. Greg's like my right hand man. Helps helps us do a lot. We're gonna visit today. We're gonna visit our what we call our job 88 uh, section of the mine site. It's an 8,000 acre property. Stretches from Tamaqua all the way to Jim Thorpe. Both sides of 209, we have an active pit in Nesquahone, we have a pit in Springdale Pit, Coldale, and we have our big pit in uh, Tamaqua behind, uh, behind uh, that we're going to visit today. Behind my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for letting us do it. <laughs> uh, um, so we're going to visit the Job 88. A lot of folks can see our mining in Nesquahone when you travel 209. Our Job 88 mine is actually bigger, but you can't see it from 209. So we thought today we're going to go to 209. Uh, we will be able to get off the bus. We have some equipment parked there. Feel free to uh, take pictures, look at the equipment. We just ask that we don't climb on the equipment. And there's a lookout area that we're going to look out into our active pit. And we just ask that you don't get up on the berm and you'll see why. We don't want any, we didn't lose anyone yet today. <laughs> uh, parents with children, just be mindful of climbing on the equipment. Wives with your husbands, be mindful. Don't let them climb on the equipment. <laughs> Thought you would let them push them off the cliff. <laughs> uh, 
That's what I was waiting for. I always wanted to drop one of those. This 8,000 acres, they've been mining since 1822. Uh, in the peak of mining, there was a, or at one point of mining, there was 11,000 workers that worked on this property. Today, we have 130 workers that uh, work on our site to uh, mine, produce, process, and produce coal. About 300,000 clean tons a year that we ship all over the U.S. and all over the world. We ship to the new core steel plants in up and down the Mississippi River, South Carolina, Nebraska. We ship coal to Malaysia, Japan, Canada, and Norway. And I'd like to say one thing about the folks in Norway. We have a mammoth scene that is uh, some of the best deposit of anthracite in the world. Very low ash. They buy our premium ash product that goes to Norway. They have a process that they take the coal, melt it into it, and make a product that they turn into a stainless steel paste. And they sell the paste to uh, manufacturers that make dental and surgical tools. So if you're ever at the dentist or just, and they drop them tools, they're really heavy and solid. They have to be at the utmost uh, stainless steel. They can't afford the rust chip when they're working on it. So that's what Elkham Carbide does. One of the things they do in Norway, from product from right here in, in uh, Tamako. Uh, we still sell some for home heating. We have uh, any question? Anybody have? relatives that do work or did work in the coal mine. My buddy works there. A lot Ad, of them. A Ad, lot of Eddie's them. working today. Who? Eddie. <laughs> the Bosky. Oh, <laughs> I see. Bud. Okay. <laughs> He's uh, doing security today, I guess. Yeah, I thought. Well, well. So a, a lot of us do have, have uh, ties to the, to the coal industry. Good question Please. for you. We, uh, our, our, current, our current planning in mine that you see in, in all of what we do, we, we spend about three million bucks a month to mine, process, and ship the material. So uh, we're a good employer in the, in the community. You can ask Greg, uh, you can talk to some of our guys out here. We do, we do take, they might say different, but we do take care of our employees. Uh, they get uh, lots of vacation, good hours, 401k they don't even have to participate at the owners we have good owners that really take care of us and invest in these employees and we would we know without employees there's no company uh, hands down they, they make us the company go got to get my cheat sheet out <laughs> Like I, like I had, I don't have enough barley, but I had rice, but I knew barley, but what do you actually do with that? That's cold, it's ridiculously tiny, like, who, who yeah. actually burn it's smaller than that or anything like that? It's like the There's a question up here, Greg, what's the best way to get coal out of the ground? Uh, Greg, what's the best way to get coal out of the ground? Uh, Greg, what we do with some finer sized coal, uh, finer sized coal that we sell, a lot of it is sold to be blown into the uh, steel making process. We use a lot of the finer coal for water filtration. When we get to the end of the tour today, you'll see a, a size of our product that is a fine size that uh, we sell in water filtration, steel in injection in the steel. And we sold 5,000 ton to the city of Las Vegas that they use to filter to back flush their pumps to help clean the water. And I, I like to get that in there because a lot of celebrities and people whoop it up in Las Vegas and we know what they might think about coal, but when they bathe, they don't realize anthracite coal is helping clean that water in the city of Las Vegas and a lot of your water big, large water municipalities. We sell a lot to Xylem. 
company There's a crack in the mountain over that there. Uh, does a lot of them, puts them filter beds in. Yeah. Which one are you driving? The biggest one. Being here 35 years, I, I like to tell visitors we have Penn State Mine Engineering Group, Yale Geo uh, Science Groups, Kutztown Geology. They come throughout the years with their students that go through. And I don't like to uh, lose sight of our, our forefathers and some of the things that they went through, conditions they went through working on, on the, this property. If you look at the mine entrance, 1845 to 1930. Back at that time, most people from Coldale would walk over here. They'd go in this building in front of us. They would change clothes, put their work clothes on, and they would walk in that mine entrance. And they would go in about five or 700 feet and get on an elevator. And the elevator would go down to one story. Some of us would get off second, third, fourth, fifth levels and get off and go to work. We won't see each other till the end of the day. And uh, winter time gets dark early, gets light late. These guys would go to work, come out, and never see daylight till the weekends or holidays if they weren't working. And if they worked six, seven days a week to try to survive, they didn't see daylight all winter. Uh, we're the elevation that we're at on the ground here, when we go on the other side and see our pit, think about where we're at. Our pit floor is going to be a hundred foot lower than this elevation. So you think about us being down another level or two when we get on the other side. This used to be Coaldale number eight breaker area. And there's a famous picture. We have a picture down in the office. There was uh, women and children around this mine entrance. The men were up, the men went on strike for better conditions, more wages, and they stayed in the mine. And the, the women and the wives started supporting them. And it filled around here, and the owners are like, okay, come on out, we'll do it. They hung in there and stuck till they got uh, what they wanted. And in 1902, as things started progressing, the demand for anthracite was growing to fuel the Industrial Revolution, they had to continue to get the coal from here to Jim Tharp to Philadelphia. In 1902, when the men were slowing down, demanding better conditions, President Roosevelt visited this site here in Coaldale in 1902. The first group looked up the year, because I said in early 1900, they confirmed it was 1902 and visited this site, and shortly after, the United Mine Workers Union started right here in Coldale on this site. And uh, so pretty, pretty good, pretty great history here. And at that time, people were coming to America to work in the coal mines of a promise to make 50 cents a week. They left everything and came with just a suitcase and got here, and then the owners at the end of the week said, you owe me five cents for tools, you owe me five cents for supplies, you owe me five cents for housing. You bought st stuff on credit in our company store and they ended up with nothing. And they couldn't go back. They had to stay here. So talk about uh, some you know, rough times. But hey, we pay Greg a dollar a week. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe, maybe there's a chance it won't happen, but DEP is going to raise uh, reclamation and bonding costs starting next year. So we normally reclaim about 50 acres a year. We're trying to reclaim as much as we can so we don't have to end up giving more money for that. So we started grading and dozing this, but we're preserving the mine entrance. So we didn't bulldoze that over. And we actually have a plan to paint it and stuff and save it because it's really a really rich history for here. Is there still infrastructure for that? For the first 500 feet going in, but we mine through it on the other side, oh, okay. so there's 
the elevator's gone and all of that stuff is gone. You'll see when we get there, but okay, Mike. Any questions? The drone. When you get off the bus, when you get off the bus, I want everyone to go to the front because we got to get the bus turned around first, gotcha. and then we could look at the lookout. We can talk. Uh, again, just be mindful of the children and husbands stay off the equipment. I'll check this out. The uh, news. Now she's gonna drive it. 
And you won't have to worry about snow with one of these. This is cool over here. They said to be mindful of the berm. You're gonna see why. Oh. I'm looking, I'm looking. Wow. Yeah. That's the thing that drills. Look at that. Look at that sliding board. Yeah. Put that on that fly. <laughs> wow. at 100 feet so that's basically 10 floors in a building no you don't want to go over there you once you fall you're not stopping so you hit the bottom yeah me and jimmy we walked this power line from tamako and we got up to this i think it was before they done two years ago before they were excavating it we were up over there there's the crack over there Nah, this is a, a lot better view. Uh-oh. Up. <laughs> nah. Oh, no. I'm surprised they bought this up here. Well, the roads aren't too bad. It's almost like Macadam here for how packed it is. I was telling my people, you don't have to worry about snow if you have one of these in your driveway. <laughs> they said, yeah, I just, who's going to drive it? <laughs> Hope the brakes work. <laughs> Imagine when something like this breaks down. Well, yeah, production. Go ahead, stand in it, hon. Go ahead, hon. Go in it. Hey, give you a size comparison. How tall are you, hon? Like 410? Wow. There's what we need for the garden. <laughs> yeah, okay. the garden okay. <laughs> yeah, it's got a hitch on the back or a plow on the back. Uh. <laughs> I'll have that garden done in no time. And the pool. <laughs> they load this stuff in. I think this is relatively a smaller one. They make them bigger than this. You yeah, should probably walk right underneath it. Right there in the front. Oh. You go up that ladder. Go up the steps, man. On your left, the first door on your left is the tab. <laughs> oh, Look at this. I am holy Hannibal. Oh my God. Yeah, you don't want this running over you. Yeah. Look both ways before crossing streets up here. Yeah, right. Oh my God, it's a top. Yeah. That's well, just <laughs> Look, you don't even have to jack it up. You can just walk right underneath it. Wow. Nothing's gonna fall. No, that thing. No, that's attached. Oh, There's the water that. truck they use to keep the dust down up here. That? That's all mud from splashed up from here. Mud and coal and whatnot. There's your exhaust. Oh, Imagine rolling coal on that thing. Blood. <laughs> Even a camera on the side here so you can see how close you are. No, they're supposed to drive left one so they could see how close they are to the edge over here and two if they're driving left and the cabs are on either side of each other so the, the cab coming the other way would be way over here and picture this truck turned around the cab would be over here that cabs over that gives them a little more safety how do you put it buffer zone so if they did hit head on the cabs wouldn't get crushed but mainly it's so you could see as you can see they have cameras mounted here so they could see how close yeah you don't want this thing rolling down the hill especially if it's loaded loaded or not <laughs> neat very neat machine i wonder what that square thing is on the side here 
I don't know. Looks like a sign of some kind. Maybe a light. It might be a light. But yeah, yeah you'll stand by that tire, hun. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, imagine you get a flat on that truck. I don't think these go flat either. What is it? 27 R49 is the size. <laughs> so, 49 inch tire. Wonder how much that costs. That's a lot. Bridgestone. Look at this. Yeah, this is the tracks they leave. Yeah, it's like, geez, one tread is as big as my foot. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah. You don't want to be up here when it's muddy. No way. Oh, we gotta get back. Somebody got to go third shift. So we put up a roster, asked our guys if you prefer third, second, first, sign up. We came to take the roster down on Friday, and we didn't have to tell one person that they have to go third or whatever. All the guys worked it out, filled it in. We had a guy that was here two weeks. He would have went third shift. He said, I can't. That's why I came here. I got to be home with my daughter. The guy said, you go day shift. And People that were here took the third shift. So then July, four months later, we got our plan approved and we brought the guys back here. And they lost, they worked 10 hours, they went to eight hours. You can't do three tens, you had to do three eights. So they lost 10 hours overtime for four months. We worked three shifts too. And then we came back and I was saying on the bus, that made us better. And we lost some guys, but these guys that uh, stayed with us, I mean, they, uh, they just got their bonus on Friday. They got a bonus every month. 
these guys get a bonus for moving rock. If they move rock, a certain amount of rock, dirt, they get a bonus. If they move more, they get more bonus. And our philosophy is move the, move the rock and dirt, and then the coal will be in your way. Just focus on moving rock and dirt. And these guys, uh, you know, you can talk to Anthony and, and uh, a lot of our, we got a good, good uh, workforce. Safe. We haven't had a lost time injury um, since uh, the breaker had one last year. One all last year in the breaker, a guy lost two days from um, slipping and falling. And these guys haven't had a lost time injury in 800 and some days. There's a lost time injury; they lose their bonus for the month. Uh, some people wrestle with that, but we did it for a year before we implemented. It, said, "Hey guys, you can do it," and uh, we keep track of every incident, whether it's a, a fender bender, or, uh, anything, anything. Uh, guy drops the fuel nozzle, starts squirt fuel mistakenly, we'll do an incident report on everything. Uh, there's been 23 fatalities across the country in mining so far this year. And uh, we certainly don't want that to tear a company apart. And uh, um, down to my right, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's it's been a slaughter over there. There's good things and all bad is what we attribute. We can only control what we can control. So uh, uh, Russia supplied 80% of the world's anthracite up until February of last year when they invaded Ukraine and the United States and all the countries uh, st stopped buying from them, stopped associating with them. It opened the floodgates for anthracite coal not only for us, but every operator in Schuylkill County. We had 98 workers in February of 2022. We have 126. And uh, we opened Springdale Pit. All we do over there is move rock. We're gonna spend $4 million for the rest of the year just to move dirt. We'll be sitting on coal. That'll be our coal source to uh, increase production for next year. salesman in Alabama and uh, that lives in Alabama and we know there's coal that went to South America from Russia unloaded put on another barge shipped to New Orleans for the steel plants uh, up and down the Mississippi but it didn't come from Russia it came from South America uh, or Russia via South America so but it's still costly that's st they still that they can't compete We'll start, you know, they, they're going to, I don't know, we, uh, we, again, we can just do what we do. No one takes our coal, pulls it to a power plant to burn to produce power. So it'll, all my career, the war on coal, we, we never really felt it. It was all geared towards the bituminous. That's high sulfur. Uh, they burn it, the stuff that goes in the atmosphere. Anthracite is low sulfur and it's used for the carbon product. No one takes it, no one takes raw material at a $200 a ton burn to produce power. So we, uh, we, we feel we have a niche, we'll be in demand for a long time. Um, we're excited, love what I do. Uh, Cole keeps the lights on. <laughs> yeah, say, uh, I'll, uh, I told the last group, never dreamt I'd be a coal miner, but I can't imagine myself doing anything else now. I'm always a good I tell you something, you argue. That's, a, so, uh, that's, a, that's part of my, my story, but uh, um, yeah, um, these guys
guys, Anthony will drive a big truck like that. He's telling the group, uh, 40-some loads he'll do in the shift. If, they, if they're working in this cut over here with the uh, big orange shovel, they have to come out around. He has to go down. If he goes to the top dump up there, he might get 30 loads. It's a little further. If he dumps down here short, he'll get 40 loads. Uh, is, there, is there a lot of training to do on those cuts, or is it kind of just... No, they they have to get task trained. There's right. first they have to go through new minor training before they can even start working. Um, then then they'll get in the truck, and somebody will they'll drive with someone, and maybe by the end of the day or the second day they'll drive. They'll stop here, and then they'll drive until they get to the dump, and and then they'll do it on his own. And it's a little scary when you're yeah when you're backing up to a 200 foot dump. <laughs> It's a little yeah. scary at first, but there you go. Hunter's a job for you. That's yeah. usually you drive one of the big trucks. Yeah. He'll train you. Yeah. We have fall down there. Yeah, truck fall drivers down. on day shift, five on second shift, and same thing at Nest Mahoney. And then we got two at Springdale day shift. So we have 32 truck drivers. Thank God we have guys that just want to drive trucks. So there's uh, that's usually entry level. Then they'll transition onto bulldozer loader. Then they'll transition to excavator, shovel, shovel, drag line, electricians, you know, thirty-six dollars an hour. They're they're the higher rate entry level on the trucks, like twenty-two fifty. Um, full benefits. We've been getting guys out of construction, they're tired of driving, not working when it's raining, things like that. So uh, we've been fortunate that that we, we are fully staffed um, with the time. Any women? Yeah, oh, yep. Okay. yeah, we, we do. Uh, when we get down to the plant, we got girls that, only girls that run our lab, uh, lab technicians that run our weigh-in scales and all that, and uh, in the op controller, the administrative, we have a girl just graduated West Virginia, mine engineer, out here with the surveyor she's an intern uh, she's hoping to stay full-time she's a, she grew up in Hershey and uh, just graduated we have a uh, senior engineer West Virginia president's Virginia Tech uh, operations manager West Virginia we have a Penn State guy all mine engineers uh, yeah it takes a lot of planning uh, one, one of our biggest challenges is if you look at all the hard rock, when we when we drill and blast that, if we got to move a million yards from this cut yet, we got to move a million yards. There's a 30% swell factor, so we got to make sure we have room for a million three hundred thousand yards. And when you blow it up and dump it, it's all fluff. It's not intact. And if you miscalculate. dump it high that you know uh, rainwater and stuff can leave our property we can't just go into the sky um, that's the only we're, we're bound by certain areas and uh, which is all good um, that's why you see a lot of piles around as we go down and you see old piles here and there that was from years ago when they were running out of spoil area and they just wanted to get rid of it quick uh, get it out get the coal uh, the folks in Nesquahoney are mining towards the west these guys are mining to the east same seams and they'll meet 27 years behind Panther Valley High School oh, wow. oh, oh my god <laughs> and then Anthony and Greg they'll decide where they're gonna go then <laughs> at that time so this rock here then is this like Shale or what is it? Blade or no, it's uh, there's some shale. You can tell oh, some, okay. some oh, shale, and okay. you know as we go, as we go down, okay. but as you get down into the hard stuff, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Our, our geologists would love that question. Yeah. <laughs> we, is it be? You just won't get home till six, man. He, he loves talking about that. But, uh, it's just weird seeing how smooth it is like that. It's 
Well, it's solid then, all the way into the mountain. That's all solid rock then into the mountain. Uh, no, no coal beyond that. Uh, and and if that would fall, we'd probably all be dead. <laughs> we'd be under attack from Russia or something. But uh, if anything would force that, or it'd be a major earthquake or something. But the scenes, the layers, picture of onions. I, I always use the canoe to give a, a uh, understanding. But also an onion. You peel the side off the onion. Once you get outside the onion, there's no more coal. But then you have your layers. That's our challenge for us. Underground mining is all flat. They, they take a seam like this road and they chase it forever. We have to work like this. We're, we're challenged with that. Can they ever mine over there where that crack is at? Uh, they could, but there's a lot of dirt on top of it. That's yeah. what they see. <laughs> 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, they there's, work in the crack. There's some other... <laughs> We'll, we'll leave them with some good mapping. There's, a, there's other places better. To, we, we, uh, we certainly once screwed them. Uh, but on that side, going towards Speedway, Tamaqua, there's that was strip mined, and then not too much mining. So that's that's more of a uh, that would be more lucrative than something like this. Hell's Kitchen and Nesh Mahoning on the other side of where we're going towards Jim Thorpe. That was only strip mined. That would be more lucrative. This is closer to the plane. Less of a haulage. That would be better than first than Hell's Kitchen to haul it all the way in. Unless we built a new plant. Somebody asked about another plant. We said we need 20 million to build a new plant. <laughs> Not yet. No, there's still good coal over behind the East End of the Mocha. Yes. Yep. The Ron Township Reserves, they call it. That was only strip mined, like out through here. You see where there's no trees up in there. In the 30s, 40s, they had a drag line. They faced a drag line basically just on top of this hill. And they just dug the coal where it came out of the ground for 100 feet, as much as they could. And then they backed up, dug more, and backed up, and they went all the way through this, all the way through this property. back and we take all this off we don't get any mammoth coal for the first hundred feet so that's a challenge moving all that dirt and not getting paid day for, for a little bit so we're always trying to have have it like this so we're always getting payday while we're doing another cut and then be in payday here like we are now starting to drill and blast first and, and they'll be going up there again. And there's where they're they're drilling. I don't remember hearing about the coal. What was the, the issue with the, the cracks? If you look at the big crack, yeah. cracks up here. Yeah. From them two points, it goes down to like this. Well, somewhere, something underneath that middle let loose underground and forced that to cave in, and that's what cracked. <laughs> The, the rock just cracked in. Did that happen during blasting? Or? No, it happened on a. We're, it happened on a Sunday night. We weren't even working. We came in Monday, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we saw that one down there by St. Clair, and that was something. That the whole side of the. Even like what you see there now, you see the you see the top gray section. Well, every time it rains or snows, we get water down in, in you know, behind that layer of the onion. So now it freezes, and water can expand nine percent when it freezes. So you get water down; it's going to force stuff to expand, maybe crack and create a void, and then it melts and goes deeper and freezes. And so who knows, but a lot of that, a lot of that, it, it could have been happening in over years and years and uh, getting down, uh, there's an old, there's an old area.
air shaft right in the middle there of the old underground miners that they got air in or out. We believe there was rainwater and stuff going down that hole for many years and uh, something let loose underground. We obviously can't be under there to, to know there was no way to get anything down there. None of us are certified underground. Stick our finger in an underground opening, we're out of compliance. You have to be, so we're not, we're just cert certified surface. How much underground mining took place? Not on this property. Uh, most of the most of the production in the U.S. of bituminous lignite coal is, is uh, underground mining. Anthracite, it's all surface mine. There is still some little uh, underground operators. Get hard on them with the regulatory agencies to put in a safety room every thousand feet underground communication cable. Just to put in the communication cable, seventy thousand dollars. That'll that'll hurt them. That's, that's tough when you're when you might only make seventy thousand a year. Uh, so that's you'll see you'll see less and less of that. You might see it's illegal. <laughs> they might do it illegal, but uh. On the book, so yeah. Good questions. So is this part of the Mammoth thing? Yeah. Is this, okay, that runs down because we've been to the um, the mine in Aspen. Okay. There, so. Yeah. So all the seams through okay. the straight on through it, they mine this. It is what it is. We can't we can't take the raw material and add something to it, make it better, or take something away. It is what it is. So. You know, we we have, this property is really good mammoth coal, uh, some of the best. We always say the Lord gave us an extra squeeze here. Uh, we'll take it. My father always said that the mammoth bank should last at least a hundred years in mining. Uh, where are we in comparison to the entrance well, that we see down there? Um, the entrance store? Yeah, we're not. We're we're uh, actually. Okay, almost this puddle down here between, not halfway between the little puddle on the right is where our gate is. Yeah, not too, not too far up the hill, just on the other side, basically. So is the inside number eight totally obliterated now? Or? The, all the way in, the, the shaft, the hoist shaft used to be right down in here. We mined through it. We just mined through it every level. We mined through. And uh, the first, like, you can take them doors open and go in there yeah. for 500 feet and then you'll just hit a bank you can't you can't get out into here uh, and we're, again we're not certified we can't even go in there if we get caught in there I'll be in jail <laughs> uh, yeah no god forbid something will happen and somebody get hurt we're uh, certified test for methane before you even go in. You got to check your air and, and things. You think there was what, eight levels deep there? No, I believe there was five levels at number eight. Yeah, they just called it number eight because it was after number seven when they were building it. And then there was the shell, the one breaker up on the hill here, right? That got torn down. That was number 12. Yep, yep, number 12 plant that's gone. Yeah, yeah, that was that was about our dump pile at the end down there. That's where number 12 sat up in there. And, uh, we tore that down because DEP wanted, came out around that time, wanted, uh, they passed uh, laws that if you have structures that are dilapidated post bonding, you want to leave them up. And then they wanted $90,000 for that. So we tore it down uh, and scrapped that metal. But, uh, and, it, and it all it all falls into the reclamation. It makes sense. If we didn't have to fill in some of the, I mean, it costs money. We won. Uh, that's why they didn't do it years ago. And uh, so that was but another entrance you're saying over there. No, there was like a shell of a breaker that was. Right oh, a breaker. Yeah, another plant. And then every every ton of coal that we sell, three hundred thousand. Every coal operator in the U.S. Every ton they sell. A uh, dollar goes to the fund, reclamation fund, to Washington, and then it goes to Haiti, and no. Uh, <laughs> but it goes to the fund, 
it goes to the fund and uh, and then they take that and divide it up the states and they and it divided up the states to fill in some of them old reclamation and uh, uh, it's a, when it when the act becomes due or up some politicians and that in Wyoming Colorado they fight this stop that because all their stuff all their reclamations done Pennsylvania we still need more reclamation so we fight that to keep it going because we didn't get the money in the beginning they got the money and and some of those companies produce 20 million tons of material. That's 20 million dollars they can keep. So uh, you always hear about that when the, when it comes time for to keep the fund going or not. I don't know how you can until everything's done. I don't know how because then it fall back on us or somehow we'd have to pay to fill in what hasn't been filled in yet. Not only here but Welch Bear through Schuylkill County. So it's uh, good that they do it. We don't like pay sending it. That's, an, that's a lot of extra money for us too, but uh, it does make sense. And that's all part of mining. That's all part of what we have to plan, figure out as we continue going. Uh, if, you know, sometimes we're not perfect. Sometimes we mess up and we don't make as much as we uh, thought we would or it costs us more than we thought it was. But our guys are pretty good. Any young guys here remember the Oklahoma City bombing? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an old gal, I remember it. <laughs> well, if, if you remember what happened there, that guy had 2,000 pounds of fertilizer in that rider truck and devastated the building, killed 110 women, children, men. So 2,000 pounds, when we blast this pattern, we'll use about 30,000 pounds of explosive to create the energy and force to blow up the material like you see to the right of it. See all the fine material to the right that was shot on Friday. Yeah. So it'll blow it up like that so we can dig it. We can't dig hard. We can't dig in a solid rock like that and dig it. We have to blow it up. So, uh, and that labor, not a Greg's on our payroll, labor. <laughs> Fuel and blasting and explosives are our three biggest costs um, that take up most of our uh, spend to move this. Uh, we move about 600,000 yards a month of material. And if you take a football field, 100 yards, 50 yards wide, 50 yards high, that's a million yards. So we do about three quarters of that in a month, that we take that section, 75 yards, and we pick it up basically and move it. Uh, and that's what they do. So how did this stack up like with the deep coal mine that was done at eight versus what you guys are doing in terms of like efficiency, amount of material? I'm not uh, sure, I'm not sure what, what they did, but basically they left half the coal. So what they took, and again, if you picture this being covered and them working underground, they couldn't take it all or everything it could collapse on. So they basically took 50% and they left Ah, uh, the pillars, out. yeah. And when, when these guys are mining across, they might go through an area and there's no coal. It's like, wow, they robbed them. <laughs> so they were working unsafe. Maybe it was good times. They needed the money. You know, and, and then we'll get to places where it's like, oh, they missed where they laid off, did, where they, did they not, who, who knows? I mean, just things we go through and we see as we, as we are remining. Do you find any relics, like mine cars or anything? Yeah, all the, yeah, we, we, uh, we have a, we have
have a magnet at the plant, everything goes through a magnet first, so we're always finding. Even like here, you wouldn't. I heard up by Ashland, they pulled out some mine cars out of. The guy was digging, yeah, he pulled them right. Up. We never got a mine car. We we heard they were taking. Well, uh, not sure going that way, but number eight, they said they got them all out before they were done. Number nine, mm -hmm. they were cleaning. So yeah, I've been in number nine. <laughs> Just wondering. We just usually get to the hill. Wasn't there a guy up in Gerardville found that was buried in the mines? He went through the thing, they found his clothing. And it was a miner that was buried alive in one of the collapses when they were strip mining. They must have gone through the machine. They found his pants, his boots. And they think I found that they said something like ID, but they weren't sure if like an ID tag. And they said, Oh, this guy's from like eighteen hundred something. They just replaced you back then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Bad, but, uh, yeah. They cared more for the uh, mules and canaries and, and then they did the people. <laughs> hmm. Um, put your ass on a porch and said, next man up from the family. That's what it was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> how, how often does this area get inspected or is, is there people that come and. A lot. A year or <laughs> once a month? We wish. We wish once a year. Uh, so we're mandated by the, the federal government's mandated to do two inspections a year at each site. Uh, Breaker here, Little Italy, Springdale, and when they come to do an inspection, it's it's a, they're here about 25 days. Oh, they'll, wow. they'll stop every operator, make them put their parking brake on, check their lights turn their wheels, back up horns, they'll talk to them, hey, what does this button do? What do they have to know what that means. They'll go over our plans, they'll check all their training records, make sure we just didn't bring them to work without training. Hmm. Uh, check berms, and that takes about 25, 30 days. And, uh, and then we got DEP, uh, mining, division, environmental, electrical, Weights and measures, boiler, radiation, uh, lots of agents. <laughs> so everyone has their hand out. <laughs> every day, maybe not at where Anthony and them were working out here, but they're here every day. So uh, and they just had a stand down. The federal inspector showed up May 17th, unannounced. They made us stop all the guys, put them together, and they had a talk with them and said, guys. 22 fatalities so far this year. Check your equipment. Don't be doing working unsafe. Make sure you got burnt. And they had a what they called the stand down. Just on that pace, we're we're on pace for 44 fatalities. Last year was 29 through the whole industry. So MSHA's freaking out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, rightfully so. The last group had a question. I just thought of it. The biggest coal producer, coal, this is all coal, biggest coal producer is China. They make half the coal. Well, I should say they burn. So, despite what people say, uh, if you take all the coal in the world, China burns half of it, not the United States. I'm oh. right. I'm my ear. They have four million coal miners, China. The United States is the second producer of coal, all coal by Tuminous Anthracite. We have 61,000 coal miners. They have 4 million, we have 61,000. Wow. We're the second largest producer. Wow. Uh, so they, we do produce it. And, uh, no one could f tell how many fatalities they have. I mean, if they, if you talk to someone from there, they'll say five. Uh, you know, and then we're like last hour. Five fatalities, uh, but uh, you know, MSHA really is focused on fatality. They want zero. Um, you know, we we just had a person in Texas rolled a bulldozer, 70 years old, 50 years in the mining industry. He was going to retire in three, like three weeks. He rolled the bulldozer. Uh, we just had our annual refresher training, so it's fresh in my mind because we go over that stuff. In our any other questions? Here for here, we're gonna get on the bus. We're gonna go down to our plant area, back towards the plant area.
whatever that footage is going to be slid down. That's why it stopped there. See how high the other day is? And over in that gully in the middle of the that's where I live. Somewhere over there. <laughs> How do you have it on your phone? How do you have it on your phone? Oh they had a picture over the hospital. Oh picture of the wires. Yeah, that's where we came in right down there. Alright, I'll show that later. Okay. This my head. And just for reference. You okay? Yeah. That's St. Right, Luke's Hospital or the Colvale back. Hospital. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop me crying. Be home. Okay. I, I have to get a picture because my wife said if I'm talking, no one's going to be on the bus. <laughs> so she's, she, I'm going to have fun with this. <laughs> you and your best friends. Yep. That's going to get me points. <laughs> Did anyone in the area hear the crack when it occurred? They said it happened on My Sunday friend night. that lives in Lansford said it woke up. They, they woke up. Yeah, they I'm felt sure it. Was, they thought it was just like someone throwing an M80 in yeah. and somewhere. That's how loud yeah, it was. I, I mean, they might. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be hard pressed to think they heard it. To be honest with you, yeah. unless it was like two in the morning. Yeah. Uh, it's curious. It's huge. Oh yeah, I first saw that, I was like, what? Oh, yeah. that's, 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 well, that's an earthquake. <laughs> well, you figure all the years of mining underneath here, too. Yeah, sure. And then all that pressure released when they mine, it takes all the pressure off of it. Wow. Parts. <laughs> yeah, just right here in front of us to the right. Uh, you know, un unlike us, if we need our equipment or our car or trucks worked on, we take it to the garage. We can't take this equipment off site just to send it to get fixed. Some some of that hauling and that would be a lot of money. So we have to fix the stuff. So our bulldozer, you see, if you see the uh, yellow rollers, it's getting new rollers. It's going to get new. Uh, track pads and that'll take they started it this week they'll finish it up by the end of the week and and that'll be like a hundred sixty thousand dollar undercarriage change wow uh and then they'll get another three thousand hours out of it hours so yeah, yeah we go by hours we wow. don't go by miles all the all the equipment is hour meters not not, not odometers and then if you look up if you see the, our crack, the one group said, we need like a Hollywood sign, crack. <laughs> yeah. And we could do co tours for that for $24. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And if mining doesn't work out, then, <laughs> but, uh, so, if going in, the, going in the crack, the crack goes in like 27 feet. And again, if you picture, the two parts, something sinking in, and it brought the two edges in, and that's what sunk down. When it first happened, we have pictures, when it first happened, it was just cracked. But then with us not working there, and it just started sinking, or uh, falling in, basically, and started getting wider. So we have, and now we have all that material. If you, if you, aren't mad at Mike for driving so erratic and you come back in October, you won't see the crack. We only have a little bit further to go with the dump to start to continue to come across, so uh, the famous crack will be gone uh, by then. Wow, I feel lucky to have seen it then. And then, uh, Greg, Greg's gonna meet us down there, but we we feel we pay our, we're, we're really good to our employees. Yeah. We paid them well, vacation, 
they get a 401k plan, they don't even have to participate. We give them 6% into their 401k gross wages that they make for the week. Uh, the con is there's no running water out here. They have to use job johnnies. So I point that out to the left. And in the winter time, when it's zero degrees and you got to go, that's a little rough. But you got to go in the job johnny and it's frozen. The oh no. Pick a rock. Yeah, pick a rock. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Alright, Mike. Yeah. That might be DEP. Oh no. Survey. No, it's probably landing at the hospital. Yeah. See well, they, do, up here. they usually do their flyovers on, on weekends. Oh, okay. they, they do just a spot check uh, backfilling. What's up? Oh, there it is. No fly a helicopter. Don't do it in a helicopter yet. Yeah. Yeah, it's landing at the hospital. The uh the the trucks that the trucks that are on our left. We bought them in Nevada from a Caterpillar dealer. They got shipped in, and they just started showing up in the last couple weeks. So they're starting to put them to get back together here. And the two that are closest to us, they had to cut the beds in. They had to cut the beds in three pieces to truck across the country. Now they, now they got to wow, weld them. Wow, you see the god. bed? You see how wow. the beds are cut in half? Oh, yeah. oh my god! Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Which means from Nevada to Pennsylvania, there's one state that didn't allow super loads to come in one piece, so they cut them. Then they got to weld them back together. And how much do you want those cost? Five hundred thousand a piece used for used. Yeah, they're a triple seven is about one point two million. What's, what state was I in for I'm not sure, oh, but okay. that's how we know when they showed up. Our <laughs> yeah, right. we know that. Permitting some well, state or wouldn't let the oversized load. And I thought you said oh, this is a big hit up here. <laughs> years of reserves. Drivers will haul it off road all the way in. If you look, if you look out in front of us up on the hill, there is a gray bin. Beyond that gray bin is where they dump the raw material on the ground. It'll get put into a crusher, and we crush everything to three and a half inch by zero diameter. It comes into the plant over the main raw coal belt, goes into the plant and it gets sized. It all starts sizing into different sizes. It gets pumped 97 feet to the top of the tan section. When it hits the tan section, the whole tan section is what does the separation. If, and basically, if you take a bathtub of water, filled with water is 1.00 specific gravity. If we put all our raw material in it, everything sinks. We introduce magnetite or iron ore to our water and we make a 1.75 specific gravity. In essence, we're making the water twice as thick. Now when you put that raw material in, the coal floats, the rock and dirt sinks. That's how we separate it in that tan section. 
Then it's pumped to the top of the green section, finishes washing, cleaning, a little bit more finer sizing, comes down and then in the big square section above the garage doors, there's all pockets in there. All the coal is fed into pockets, triaxles, tractor trailers, Tyrone Rarick, when he comes for coal, they go behind the, the plant and they come under them garage doors and we have a person in there that fills the coal right into their trucks. And then they come off and weigh it. Our two big conveyors here take two of our most uh, produ produced sizes. The one in front of us here, we're on a two week planned maintenance shutdown at the plant. Two weeks ago we sent 10,000 ton and we cleaned this off and loaded rail cars. You, if you live in town, you've probably noticed a lot of rail cars going in and out since Russia invaded Ukraine. That's a good thing for us. Don't have a little patience when you have to get in and out of town. <laughs> because it's keeping our men working. But uh, we don't dictate the time they pull it out. It seems like it's always four in the afternoon on a Friday. That's not us. That's the railroad. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. would be great, right? But uh, bring it up with the railroad. And then if you look at this size, we talked a little bit on our way over. I said I would talk when I get here. If you look at that pile, that's what we call our number five. If anybody has a charcoal grill, burns charcoal, them square black briquettes, 25%, the black and 25% of that briquette is anthracite coal. 75% ah. uh, is crushed wood, compressed wood. It'll light right away from the wood, it'll keep burning from the coal. Steel make recycled steel process to inject the carbon back into recycled steel. And that material mixed with the size here is what I talked about selling to Las Vegas. So Las Vegas put 5,000 ton of anthracite coal in their filter beds. When they back flush their dirty pumps, and everything goes like this. The rock, the coal, the rock, the coal settles and keeps dirt from getting back into their water system. The green section here on the top was added in 2007 and these conveyors were put in in like 2013 that we added on. Um, we don't use the back 30% of the plant. That, we don't use our drum separator things anymore. We have room in there for it add on increase in production. Uh, the owner, I have to tell you a story. The time they're in about a year or two later, he mentioned it again. We said we did get a quote to paint the breaker, $440,000. He never said anything about paint the breaker. <laughs> so, uh, but it's really, it's really just, think, it's just the sizing and separate sizing and no, training is. plant that's all it is and we can't have our guys get rained on so it, it just literally got a shell years ago and that's all it was meant for not to uh it's everything's wet yeah. well it's all over if it freezes it's a long day <laughs> i've been there it'll take you all day to unfreeze it and then you gotta hope it doesn't freeze again overnight to the next day. Yeah, uh, again, just want to thank you. Oh, one thing. On our right, part of DEP, as they, they're regulated by EPA. Uh, as, as regulations evolve and they come down on DEP, they come down on us, we have to do things like this. Uh, we put this series of ponds in, so any rainwater doesn't allow yeah, does. solids from the property to leave our property into the Panther Creek. So I'd like to say, if you look at these ponds, tell me they look like a million bucks, because that's what it costs. Until <laughs> uh, till, till you saw what was here, and we, we tore, cut the trees and, and regraded it, but uh, 
So we, you know, we we like the DEP guys. <laughs> they help us spend our money. They just dug down. They just dug down. Whatever was there when they got done, they left. No EDP, no, wow. no safety stuff. They had guys that would jump on the little mule cars. One guy missed the car and got killed. Oh. Yeah, Eddie. But yeah, it, what a difference. Again, thanks for your interest. Spread the word for the Historical Society. We're going to do it in August for Rail Fest in October. Uh, when we get off the bus, Greg will be there, has a trinket for everybody. And let's give uh, Mike the bus yeah. driver. Yay! Here's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> let's give you a hand, John. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mike. What's that? He kept the sound of the big hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he did good. That's a big hole, all right. Yeah. Yeah. We survived. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's going to do it. We we're on our. Yeah, just got back from that tour. It was pretty neat. Never got to see. Uh, strip mining area up there since I lived here. I think back in the 70s, my grandfather took me up. They had an open house. And back then it was Lehigh, uh, old Lehigh anthracite. Uh, here we got another ambulance coming down the street. So where that gets here, it makes all kinds of noise. Uh, thanks for coming along with me and my wife. And until the next time, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, share this video with all your friends, please. Like, give us a thumbs up. And until next time, later.